And then Nate's going to come in. He, Nate Swartz has been with me for several years now, and he's just wonderful. And uh, he's going to talk about some more details about how to diagnose it. And then I'll follow up on some of the new, newest and latest technologies for treating melanoma. So it'll be really interesting. And again, if you have any questions, please just speak up, or we can have them at the end or whatever. This is an interactive session for all of us. So. Great. Amy. All right. So get us started. I'm Amy Feninga. I went to Virginia Tech for undergraduate in the Eastern Virginia Medical School in Norfolk, Virginia for my PA degree. Um, and I've most recently been practicing in Atlanta, Georgia. And my husband's um, company relocated us here to Sarasota. So now I'm excited to join Dr. O'Donohue's group and become a, a Floridian. So today, oh, can you see? Okay. Today we're talking about melanoma. Melanoma, the most common, three common skin cancers are basal cell, squamous cell, and melanoma. And melanoma is the more concerning of the three skin cancers. There's over 75,000 new cases a year of melanoma in the United States. Over 9,000 people a year die, unfortunately, from melanoma. About one person an hour dies from melanoma. Um, and the incidence of melanoma is increasing. And we ask why? So, We've become better at diagnosing melanoma. The primary care doctors now are doing a lot of skin exams and are asking about changing moles and things. And also people are coming out to more uh, lectures and things like this and are becoming more aware themselves are doing self-skin exams and noticing if anything's changing. So we're be becoming better at finding these spots. Um, we're all living longer these days. And also with the great invention, not a great invention, of the tanning bed and use of tanning bed, that's really caused an increase in skin cancers. Does anyone here use the tanning bed, ever use the tanning bed? Why don't they have wool yeah. I, uh, I did. I'm sorry. I did. Okay. I, I, did. <laughs> I did. I did. I'm not, you know. In high school, you know, 25 years ago when they first came out, you know, it's prom and you girls, you want your legs right. to have a little color on them and I did it, you know, but now we know it's bad. Why don't they have wool? Like young girls. Well, I mean, that's, people are definitely up. working on it. I mean, it's, there's yeah. lobbies, you know. There are there's several that. states now uh, where they ban them uh, under the age of 18. Yeah, you have, you have, have a, a parental consent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's getting there. Yeah. Um, so your risk factors for melanoma first are going to be your skin type. So green eyes, blue eyes, fair skin, the number of moles and abnormal moles that you have. So some people you, you've just seen at the beach. There are some people that are super moly. And so the more moles you have, you know, some people have no moles. And you look, my sister's like this little moly, moly, moly. Um, but the more moles you have, I don't think it's, it's just harder to find. You know, if you have a sea of moles, there could be just one guy hanging out in there that's, that's misbehaving. Like the uh, sheep and the, what is that, the, the wolf, wolf and the sheep's clothing? clothing. Yeah. 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 Uh, family history or personal history of melanoma. So a family history is really your first degree relative. So it's going to be if your mother, father, your brothers or sisters or your children had melanoma, you're at an increased risk than the general population. And if you yourself has had a melanoma, you're at a higher risk of getting a second melanoma. The general risk is about 1% for getting a melanoma, but if you had a melanoma, it goes up to 5%. You think, well, 5% is low. You think if I got 5% off on a cell, that's not that much. But 5% is five times more than if you were in the general population at 1%. So it really